And the same unlimited obeisances and the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Shikshu Purve. Om Vishnu Pada Stodhana Sashi Shima Shri Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Gosai Maharaj. To all of our disciples of succession and all the assembled devotees. So Isha Prabhu, who is the fearless leader of Pure Bhakti TV, has requested that we speak about a few words about the meaning of Vyasa Puja because it's coming up in a few days as you'll agree with So what comes to mind hmm? okay. okay. What comes to mind is the words Vyasa Puja. It's it's Shilavyasdev who 
And Sri Guru is a manifestation of Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva is a literary incarnation of Krishna, and Vyas means diameter. If you have a diameter from one end of a circumference of a circle to the other end, inside, that diameter is called Vyas. And then you have the central point right in the middle between one end of the circumference and another. So the middle or the center of all existence is Radha and Krishna. And the ends, the whole circumference, is all of material existence. So the bona fide guru so Sri Guru is a manifestation of the act. He starts out in the center of all existence, that is at the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna, and he spreads the glories of Radha and Krishna throughout all of material existence. He has so much power. The question was asked last night, how can Sri Guru, or how is it, why is it, that we sometimes read that Sri Guru is a manifestation of Nityananda Guru, and at the same time we read that he is an associate of Srimati Radhika. So the answer is given by Srila Krishna's Kavaraj Goswami in the first uh, Adi Lila, chapter 1. Srila Krishna's Kavaraj Goswami himself says that I worship my Guru as simultaneously a manifestation of Nityananda Guru and as associate of Srimati Radhika. By Ras, or pastimes, uh, or the flavorful relationship with Radha and Krishna. He is a maidservant of Srimati Radhika and her intimate associate. <coughs> In terms of tattva, the philosophical truth of the principle of undivided guru he is a manifestation of that undivided principle, Sri Nityananda Prabhu or Sri Balaram. So it depends on the angle of vision. If you look at the sun from one angle, you see the sun glow. If you get real close, you see the sun, um, all the palaces and the details of the streets of the sun. If you See it from another point of view. The same sun is just a disk. Here we are in Hawaii, which is clear across the planet from India. But somebody in India will say the sun is on my head, and I'll say the sun is over my head. That's the sun disk. And seen from another point of view, the sun is shine. All all one can see is the sunshine. So similarly. Uh, Guru is what he is, but we see him depending on a particular point of view, whether we see him by tattva or we see him by rest. Um, because he's an associate of Radha and Krishna, everywhere they are, he is. In one class, he said that today, a new question was asked to me that I had never heard before, and I answered it in a new way. Somebody asked me, where is Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur now? And I answered in a new way. I said, he's everywhere, because his Lord is everywhere, Radha and Krishna, they're in every atom. Andantra is done, Paramana Chayanta is done. 
here in every atom, Govinda, Adipura Shemtamaham Bajama. That Radha Govinda is in every atom. So their maid servants have to be there too in order to serve them. Wherever they are, they have to have their service. So Sri Guru is also everywhere. Um, I once asked Gurudev regarding the Guru being in every atom. And he replied that when Sukadeva Goswami was just about to recite Srimad Bhagavatam to Maharaj Kirikit, everybody, all the great sages in the universe found out. They didn't have satellites, they didn't have email, DSL, but somehow or other, so many thousands of sages found out and immediately appeared on the spot where Maharaj Prigat was to hear. So, if this is possible for the sages, the universal sages who are nowhere near as powerful as our uh, acharyas coming from the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Rupa Goswami, then what to speak of how much power they have? So this can be applied, of course, only to the bona fide guru. We see him by tattva and we see him by rust. By Russ, I asked Gurudev once regarding our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Vinaya Swami Maharaj. I said that, um, you know, I joined Prabhupada so many years ago, and in the beginning everything was fine and dandy. But then I committed so many, like thousands or tens of thousands of offenses that just the thought of the name is scary. And, you know, the word Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada. And in fact, in the uh, late 60s and early 70s, he didn't say Srila, but the big guns of the temple would call you in. So I told Gurudev that this whole concept creates a wall for me, a wall between me and Prabhupada, between my offenses and the Highness of Srila Prabhupada. So I said, isn't there some other way I can look at him to like start my relationship over again and in a more intimate way? So he said, um, Prabhu is Krishna, but Krishna is only half. The other half is Radharani. And in fact, Radharani is the bigger half the better half. I once asked him about the beads, the japa beads. There are 108 beads, and the first eight, go- eight beads represent the main gopis, and the rest of the beads are other groups of gopis. And the head bead is Krishna, so where is Radha? So Gurudev said the head bead is divided into two parts small part and the big part, and Radharani is the big part. I asked him in Mawilaba after a class, sometimes you say that Radharani is superior to Krishna, and yet we read in all Shastras that she's coming from Krishna, so how could she be superior? So Gurudev replied that the fruit is coming from the tree, and yet it's the sweetest part of the tree. So, back to Prabhupada, a more rustic understanding is that Prabhu means Krishna, but only half and not the better half. The better half is Srimati Radhika. So, Prabhupada means he who's always serving the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna, but with a leaning towards Srimati Radhika. And then he described what any Prabhupada in our line looks like as a follower of uh, Rupa Goswami Prabhupada 
and he was sitting there as little Manjari. He started to describe the sari full of jari and the black braid full of flowers and jewelry. So he said, that's Prabhupada. So when Gurudev was, was answering the question about Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur being everywhere, he said he's everywhere and he's also in Goloka Vrindavan. And from Goloka Vrindavan, he's giving mercy. Wherever Radha and Krishna are there, their near and dear associates must always be there. Another interesting point that the Guru Dave made about Guru Chajpa, and he made this point in Hawaii about three years ago, that Guru is so heavy that he's heavier even than God. Mountains are very heavy, but Guru is even heavier than the mountain. And in fact, he's heavier than Krishna. In the Gita Govinda, the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, mostly in separation, by Srila Jayadev Goswami, has explained that, as you know, there's a verse, Smaragadalakamnanam, Mamashirushimandanam, Dehi Parapalavam Udaram. That is, uh, and it goes with this very famous David Kunch painting above, that Krishna's begging forgiveness from Srimati Radhika, saying that, I'm burning in the fire of separation from you, O Radha. Please, um, Put your lotus feet on my head and forgive me, accept me, and in this way show your very uh, magnanimous and liberal nature. So in the Gita Govinda, it's stated that Krishna not only says this to Radhika, but he also says this to her maidservants. He also puts the dust of their feet on his head. This is very, very inconceivable. The Guru Dev said, this is Guru Tattva. That he's so powerful <coughs> that even Krishna surrenders. Once on Shiva Guru Dev's Vyasa Puja Day in Mawilamba about four or so years ago, he was having the devotees sing various songs to Sri Guru. And then he had the devotees sing Atmani Vedanam which is the kirtan by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, a prayer to Lord Krishna, saying that ever since I surrender to you, I see joy in all four directions. I've forgotten, I've totally forgotten my previous history, that I'm so-and-so's son or father or relative or friend or enemy. I've totally forgotten my past history, and I only see myself as your servant, the servant in your house. And all the uh, troubles that I undergo in your service are the greatest happiness. Your mind and I'm yours. There's nothing, no greater wealth to have. So, interestingly enough, Gurudev had the devotees sing that on his Vyasa Pujita very clearly indicating that that song is also meant for Sri Guru. That when we surrender to him, um, there's joy in all, all around. And how do we forget our past history? Because Sri Guru is just like fire. And no matter how much garbage you have, like you know in some buildings they have what's called an incinerator, you throw the garbage there and it goes all the way to the bottom and it's big, like five-story flames. So, it was like that. No matter how much garbage of anarchists and past sins and offensive nature 
one has, if he takes shelter of Sri Guru, then Sri Guru burns that. If he has so much lust, the disciple doesn't direct the lust at Sri Guru, but yet he puts the lust at his feet and Guru burns it. He said on one, um, Bias, not Bias, uh, one Kartik, that if you would come to me and tell me, oh, I'm so lusty, please help me, then that pure Vaishnava can take away the lust right away. But if you don't, if you try to hide it, well, I don't want him to disapprove of me, I don't want him to reject me, or worse than that, I don't want him to create trouble for me. So I won't tell him about my lust. So Gurudev said, what happens is, it gets bigger and bigger, and then it destroys you, and you lose your bhakti, and Mahaprabhu goes away, and Bhakti Devi goes away. So, how is it that Guru is so heavy? Because Krishna himself comes as Sri Guru. There's one verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila chapter 1, that the Shiksha Guru is not different from the personality of Krishna. Krishna himself comes as the internally as the super soul and externally as the greatest devotee in order to deliver the aspiring devotee. So Krishna himself comes in that form and that's why he's so powerful. I once asked him, because there was a controversy of whether or not Sri Guru is omnipotent. Of course, he's not omnipotent like Krishna, because uh, Krishna is one without a second. However, uh, when the controversy was going on, and some people were saying that it's my own philosophy to think that the Guru is omniscient, Sarvakya, Trikalakya, he knows past, present, and future. I asked Gurudev, um, how is it that the Guru knows uh, his omniscient? How is it that he's like Paramatma, and how is it that he's different? So I thought he was going to say he knows a little bit less, but he said, oh, he knows more. In fact, he knows more than Krishna, because Krishna is so busy with the cows and the coward boys that he doesn't have the wherewithal to consider or be aware of our suffering. So, Krishna has condensed mercy. And when that condensed mercy takes a shape, then that is called Sri Guru. And he's aware. Um, I'll take questions now, and we can continue the discussion through the medium of questions. Because there'll be lots of talk on this talk, on this topic, over the next days. When a conditioned soul comes to the point of pure bhakti, then at that point, does that apply to him as well? Does what apply? What you were saying is that maybe it tries to be my So the question is, when a conditioned soul, tell me if I'm right, when a conditioned soul comes to the platform of perfection, do these qualities also apply to him? There's different kinds of gurus. There's different kinds of gurus. There's uh, a partial guru who has partial powers. There's more complete and there's complete. And the completeness 
or partiality of the guru depends upon the is the day and the relationship with that is the day. Just like Lord Ramchandra is a manifestation of Krishna and not as powerful as Krishna. So his most intimate servants are not going to be as powerful as Krishna's intimate servants. If the if the day is the more complete the yesterday is, the more complete and powerful the servant is. So, for example, Prahlad Maharaj is a training bhakta. He's glorified all over in, in so many universes. And yet, Guru said he's a partial guru because his yesterday, Lord Shrinidhi, is a plenary but not equal manifestation of Krishna. And uh, say Hari Das Thakwa, he's so elevated that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu carried him in his own arms, on his own hands. He um, manipulated the sand so that Hari Das Thakwa could be put in Samadhi. And he himself went shot to shot to get arms for his Samadhi ceremony. And Maya herself became a disciple of Shri Hari Das Thakur. When first she came in the role of a prostitute. And still, Shri Hari Das Thakur is not a complete guru of the, of the highest standards relative to the intimate associates of Srimati Radhika is the most complete. So according to one Swarup, when he becomes perfect, he has the powers of those who are Nitya Siddhas. He becomes one with them in in the Swarup, Swarupata. So that in Goloka Vrindavan they don't make a distinction like how many years have you been here or have you ever left and things like that. There's no difference between a Sadhana Siddha, devotee, associate, and Nitya Siddha. So we can see how ignorant we are to forget, have forgotten ourselves. Any other questions or comments? The devotee asked last night from the internet, how can we feel close to Guru Dave when he's not when we're not in physical proximity? In Badger, I forget whether it was last year or the year before, he said, suppose there's a husband and wife, and the husband was able to come to Badger and the wife wasn't. He didn't have enough money. So, the husband is always thinking, how's my wife doing back in uh, Vancouver? And the wife is always thinking, oh, my husband is so lucky, he's here in the Hare Kita. And she's thinking of the Hare Kita that he tells her about, or that he sends her on the Hare Kita hours. So who's more with the group? The wife is more. Um, an example was given of a lamp. Just underneath the lamp, it's very dark. But the lamp spreads its light out. Another, that doesn't mean that all of Guru's, Sri Guru's associates are in the dark. But it just means that it's not necessarily of relevance that because he has more physical association, he's more near and dear. Yeah, Prabhupada actually has very little physical association with Yeah, he showed the example. Any other questions or comments? Um, one small question. Has Guruji mentioned that Narayana expands himself to uh, as many Krishna, as many expansions as Krishna has? As many as Krishna has, that many as Narada. So, is Narada aware of each expansion? Or is he only aware of that one expansion? 
as you know, like if you say I'm sitting here and and would I be aware of all my relationships that are just on this? The question is they think uh we read in the Krishna book that Narada uh was able to expand and go to the different palaces of Krishna and see him in different uh, activities with different wives. So, is Narada aware, and is anybody, everybody on the level of Narada, aware of their different, their different expansions, awarenesses, mm-hmm. or at least aware of one? There's, uh, Prabhupada says there's, there's two kinds of, like, expansions of people. One is like a photograph, and there's no consciousness, it's just expanded, like you make prints in a photograph. And that's like a material, materialistic yogi can do that. But a pure devotee, he can be fully aware, like he could be in your house and fully aware of you, and in my house and fully aware of me. Um, in 1997, we were in uh, Oregon, and one old devotee, a new Gurudev, said, you have so many followers, how am I going to get close? So Gurudev said, just like Krishna, when he was having lunch with the coward boys, each one felt that he was right up front. So Guru had that power also, that any, anyone and everyone at the same time could be right up front. Okay, so should we end here then? One last question. What would be the best and most pleasing service that could offer to you for a PSC? Sorry? What would be the most pleasing uh, offering then for if you're going to offer a PSC? What would be the most pleasing thing to offer for a PSC? Well, we always hear that the most pleasing is to offer the most expensive thing, which is the heart, which has the most value. If one gives himself, oneself is much more valuable than all of his possessions because it includes his possessions. So if one gives himself, then automatically everything is given and he doesn't have to give anything separately. Even, say, Sukadeva Goswami, he doesn't have to offer boga. If he eats something, it's considered offered because he's offered himself. But of course that's easier said than done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it takes great realization. Mahaprasade Govinde, Nama Brahmani Vaishnava, say, Oh, uh, Mahaprasade, you're not different from Krishna, from his name, from Radha and Krishna, from the Vaishnavas. So all these Krishna Tadiya, these things in relation to Krishna, or associates of Krishna, they're they can be more than Krishna, like Mahaprasadam is equal to Krishna and more than Krishna. Mahaprasad comes to us, but Krishna is not so nice to come to us. His name is nice enough to come. His Vaishnavas are nice enough to come. So they're more powerful. They don't have to follow the rules and regulations that Krishna has to follow of the requirement that it takes to come to us. So is it, does anybody in the internet world have any questions? We're not on the internet world, you're on the internet world. Mm-hmm. Get it? That's what they say to us. Okay, no questions, so we'll end here. Shiva Prabhupada Kijai, Shiva Guru Devi Kijai, Shiva Rasa Puja Kijai.
Yeah, so do it even just talking about that. I was just hanging on the TV when uh, it was a class that was done with the rainbow. They were talking about the document, right? Or one of the CDs. And uh, he was explaining about the different sketches and how they Oh, and he said, I mean, and Narda has as many extensions as Krishna. Um, oh it, you know, I had, I had one, I had one small question that I just wanted to pose to you, and that is, um, if, if we hear Kata from Vaishnava, is that we can truly read it? Is it stable to us? Not necessarily. What? If they're connected in the line, they can help you understand it and do it. And if they're pure, and they're only oh, yeah. pure, then it's like in But if they're not, but if they're in the line, they can direct you to him and help you understand them. 